the health professionals say that ladies of a certain age would benefit from weight training. So I'm combining it with watercolour this week to show you the biggest and heaviest watercolour palette I've come across. This big boy weighs eight pounds or four kilos and it comes from Mida. So if you're thinking about a new palette or you're thinking about getting a studio palette for the first time, you might be interested in seeing what it's like. I'll show you some of the adaptations I've done, such as giving it little feet. I'll show you the lid I've made for it, and I'll show you how far I've got with setting it up. My name's Liz Chatterton. I'm a watercolour artist based in Berkshire, and every week I share a tip, trick or technique I wish I'd known about ages ago. I also do product reviews, and this week I'm looking at this huge ceramic studio palette from Meaden. If you haven't come across Meaden before, they're a Chinese art materials manufacturer that has the most amazing range of ceramic palettes in all different shapes and sizes for very reasonable prices. They ship to the UK, US, Canada and Australia at the moment, but they are extending that list of countries all the time. They have very kindly given me a 10% off discount code which I'll put in the description below in case you like what you see. Oh my goodness, look at the size of this palette. I want to introduce you to this amazing ceramic palette from Meaden. It will not be for everyone. I always say there isn't a perfect palette anyway that suits everyone. But this is a palette for someone who has a studio space because it's huge. It is, let's have a quick look. Well, almost 13 inches square, which in metric is what about 32 centimeters. It weighs eight pounds, which is four kilos. So we're not talking a light bit of kit. It is not to take to your weekly art class. It is not for plein air painting. But if you're looking for a studio palette, I thought I would review it and see how good it is. You might wonder why I'm so in love with ceram ceramic palettes. Well, let, let me just show you. It's a white surface, so it's very easy to judge your colour against it. And you tend to get a really decent sized mixing area because I paint relatively large, use relatively large brushes and I want not to be mean with my, my paint. I want to use plenty of it. If you're painting big and you're trying to get a big brush into a half pan, you're going to end up damaging your brush or not picking up enough paint. Whereas on a ceramic palette, you can squeeze out plenty of paint and there's plenty of room to get your brush into the area. What I love is even if I've left this paint on the surface for, for months, for years, I can just re-wet it and wipe it off and I will have a clean, beautiful surface. So that's why I love ceramic palettes. But of course, I mean, this is the biggest I've ever seen. They don't all come in this size. <laughs> if you have a small working space, you can get a small ceramic palette. These are all from Meaden. They've just got a fantastic range. If you want a palette to store paint in as well as to mix, something like that is really clever. That's your lid and you've got storage areas. If you want a ceramic palette but not quite as big as this big boy, then they do all different size ones. So that's still a studio palette but uh, will not take up quite as much space. So you can probably tell that I'm pretty enthusiastic about this palette. I think it's absolutely beautiful and I can just imagine how great it will look when I've got all my colours set up. This is really similar to the Stephen Quiller palette that a lot of professional artists recommend. There is a huge difference in the price though. I've just looked up and in the UK the Stephen Quiller palette is £169. I personally would not dream of spending that on a palette. This Meaden palette is £34.95 in the UK. In Australia 
and in the US it is $49.95. So it's way, way cheaper. I'm just going to tell you a couple of the downsides of it, then we'll go through how I would set up this as a palette. So one of the downsides is that it hasn't got a cover. It's designed so that you squeeze your tube colour into all these wells. Well, of course, if you put it to one side and then don't come back to paint for a week or whatever, dust is going to get in there. If you've got a cat, a dog, spiders, <laughs> whatever, your paint will potentially become contaminated. It's not a deal breaker. And I thought, oh, what can I do? I can make a lid. So I have made a lid. This is the box that the, the palette came in. I cut it up, just made a lid that will fit over the top. I've covered it because I actually happened to have some sticky back plastic, but I thought that would save it getting um, trashed in my studio. The other thing, uh, I wonder how wet that is because I need to turn this over, is that if you paint on a relatively nice surface, this could end up scratching your work surface. You can see the background of all my videos. I don't work on a nice table. It's always covered with a right mucky old tablecloth. But what I would suggest, if that's if you are concerned, you can get uh, these sort of self-adhesive little felt feet. They're designed to stop your furniture scratching a wooden Just floor. Just peel off a couple of those, put them on the back, and you won't have any problem at all. You can get it in sheets, what's that called? Felt guard, it's self-adhesive, and you just stick that on and that'll solve that problem. I said at the beginning, this weighs eight pounds or four kilos. So it's obviously not designed to be carried around. That is its advantage as well. You are not gonna knock this off, it is heavy. So it is really, really stable. Sometimes when you're using a smaller palette, they will skip around. The fact that it is ceramic is one of the downsides in that it is breakable. If you chip a ceramic palette like this one, it will stain and potentially, you know, it could break totally and you'd, you'd be gutted. Of course you would. But given that stability and that weight, I think the chances of breaking this are pretty low. If you drop this on your foot, you're going to know about it. This is going to take up a huge amount of space on your work area. So if you work in a relatively limited area, again, it is just not for you. I am actually going to have to reorganise my workspace just to accommodate this. That seems a small price to pay for using such a beautiful bit of equipment. I haven't set it up yet, but I think when I do set it up, I want to swatch out all the colours. So I've drawn out the, the layout and I reckon that once I've swatched all those colours out, I will probably stick it to the lid. The only downside of that is that if you want to change the layout of your colours, if that's stuck on the lid, then I'd have to replace the lid and I'm quite proud of my handiwork there. So I may just swatch them out and, and slip it inside. Let's have a quick look how we would actually set it up. don't know if you can see here that there are three sort of arrows there. I don't know this, this is me surmising, but I reckon that those are for your primaries. So your red, yellow and blue. Opposite them, you're going to have your secondaries, which would be what, orange, purple and green and then in between you've got your tertiaries tertiaries would be all lime green so it would sit between green and the yellow english language sort of runs out of descriptions for tertiary colors but we could have a look at those you could set up your palette totally of the colour wheel which will really help you when you come to mixing colours because if you've got it set up like that say you wanted to mix complementary colours or use them alongside you know that roughly the right colour is going to be bang opposite probably use these little side wells for earth colours and those some of those neutrals you can see what a long slow process this is going to be because uh, this is just a selection of some of the tubes I have and deciding which are the what 32 
paints that I'm going to promote to being in this beautiful palette is going to take a while. So I've just grabbed out a whole load and put roughly the blues here, the yellows there, the reds here, purples, greens, etc. And there will have to be a lot of experimentation. I'm, I'm all, all in a dilemma of what exactly to do. There are going to be some colours that I rarely use, but that I have got in my paint box. So something like Potter's Pink, which is a very strange, very opaque, muted pink. Absolutely lovely, but I very rarely use it. I wouldn't bother putting that into here because I, I think I want to use this for my, my most frequent use colours. So I'm just going to move all these colours out of the way. And I think the best thing I can do is give you an example of how I would fill this process I would go through. So say that is my blues, therefore I know that orange is going to be down here. I might gather the oranges I have in my kit and decide which ones I love and which ones I don't. I adore quinacrinone sienna, which I would call an orange. Oh, whoops, that's all splurging out. Also pretty fond of Windsor orange. I treated myself to Aussie red gold before I went to Australia because I thought, how could I not? And you know, I was really quite disappointed with it. I don't know that it's that different to Quinn Gold, to be honest. Not different enough to, to warrant its place in my palette. But let's just pop that there. That's a transparent orange. And then this is Peril Orange. And I must get another tube of it because I really love this colour. And then I would swatch them out. That's the Pyrrhal orange, which I already know. It's sort of very pinky orange. So we would put it maybe slightly closer to the reds. Whereas, say, that orange, that was the Windsor orange, is a very yellowy orange. And I might put that closer to the yellow. That is the Aussie red gold that is too close to quinacrinone gold for me to include. That was the transparent orange, which is a bit richer than the Windsor orange. So if I was placing these, I would probably put those two closer to the reds, these two closer to the yellows. So I might be thinking those go there. But four out of 32, just for orange, is an awful lot. So I might have to cut it down further. Let me show you how I would fill these little pans. I would not fill them right to the top. I would probably only put that much in to start with because a lot of colours, I mean, orange isn't a, a bad one, but a lot of darker mass tone colours, it's quite hard to see what they are when they're in their dried state. A viridian can look terribly similar to a phthalo blue or something when it's dried and in a big lump. So it's quite nice to have space around it where it will be thinner on the white and it'll be far easier to recognise the colour. Also, this way we won't end up wasting lots of colour if I have made a mistake with my selection. And then finally, when I am sure of my, or as sure as I can be of my little layout, I will get my swatch card and just fill in that swatch. And I will write in the name of the colour and whether it's opaque, semi-opaque or transparent so that I've got some information and I'll build up my card so I've got that all swatched out and that'll be, really help me. But I am so going to enjoy the process because it will really help me go through my vast collection of paints and realise what beautiful colours I actually have got in my paint box. So wish me luck as I go through this process. 
I'm not going to do it in a hurry. That's helped you decide whether this is the right palette for you or not. To be honest, I was totally blown away by the price. Um, I thought that was amazing value for money and it's something I've been looking at for a while. The lovely people at Meaden have given me a 10% off code so if you do decide this is right for you and want to treat yourself or indeed if you want to treat yourself to any of the other palettes they've got that 10% off code is in the description and please use it and enjoy it. Hello, this is Future Me. <laughs> After I recorded the review of the, the palette, I started playing around and I realised that it would just take me months to make my mind up on everything. So what I've decided to do is put in some definites and leave gaps. Ones that I absolutely know that I will use all the time. So this is as far as I've got. You can see from my swatches that I haven't got it in a perfect colour wheel and that's fine as far as I'm concerned. I think some people want to set it up so that it's absolutely a proper colour wheel and that everything opposite is absolutely a complementary colour. For example, Queen Gold I have put in the yellow spot because I use it all the time. It really should be over here because it is such an orangey yellow. This Quin Magenta should absolutely be this side of the cadmium red. It's a very bluey red, bluey pink and should be further there. So I haven't done it perfectly but I've made a start. If you do treat yourself to this palette maybe don't beat yourself up about it. Just make a start. Remember don't put too much out in case you get it wrong and then develop it as you go along. I think I'm going to paint and as I think oh I can't live without oh I don't know green gold I can add it into the gaps. I do have a horrible feeling that I may end up with gaps in places where I don't want them but if I do I am just gonna have to live with it or I can probably scrape paint out and shift things around. We'll see.